My cheating wife got totally exposed and destroyed in court after trying to falsely accuse me. I, 34M, met her online a decade ago doing a 52 books in 52 weeks reading challenge. She, 36F, posted that she was undergoing chemo slash radiation for stage 4 cancer. I organized a care package and sent it to her. I had no romantic interest in her and didn't even know what she looked like at the time. She messaged me a couple of days later saying that she cried when she saw the package at her doorstep. Nobody has ever done this thoughtful for me before. We continued to exchange messages and became friends over our shared interest in books. Eventually the friendship morphed into a long distance relationship. I flew to Texas to see her, she flew to Pennsylvania to see me. Back and forth, back and forth. In 2015, she permanently moved to Pennsylvania. I put a down payment on a house, she was broke, proposed to her later 11 months later, and we got married the following year. She had a laundry list of psychiatric problems, bad anxiety, severe depression, horrible PSTD from SA, etc., which I was aware of but didn't realize their severity until we started to live together. But I was committed to her at that point. Like penguins, I commit for life. The good times, the bad times, and everything in between. Over the next seven years I was there for every low point in her life. By the time our marriage was ending, she was at the highest point in her life. All her psychiatric problems were under control. Her career was blossoming while working from home the entire time and making the most money she's ever made. She later wrote in court documents that I made her take that job so I can control her. The weasel she was cheating on me with lived in New York and she used the need to visit the company's office in New York as a cover to see him for at least two years. I started seeing him before COVID started is all I got out of her because she didn't want to talk about the affair. She was most likely cheating on me the entire time we lived together because she's been making these trips to the New York office since 2015. In seven years of living together, we had one fight. On our honeymoon in Key West, Florida she got so mad at me when I called to check up on my parents. We made up and she learned to accept that my parents are extremely important to me and I continued to call them daily, she didn't seem to mind. Remove the stress of children, we didn't have any, and money, we both had great careers, and there was nothing much to argue about. What looked like a good marriage was in reality a parasite host relationship. As I learned more about her toward the end of our marriage, I realized that this was not a woman. This is a parasite who used me to stabilize her life. Once I stopped serving her purpose, she discarded me like a piece of trash. In January 2020 we flew to Oklahoma and put down a down payment on a plot of land so she can be closer to her family. Construction on the house began the following months. We permanently moved to Oklahoma in August 2020. I left my family and friends behind in Pennsylvania where I lived for 20 years just so she can be happier. She was cheating on me while the house was being built. After D-Day, I asked her over and over, why didn't you just divorce me if you didn't want to be married and let me stay in Pennsylvania with my family and friends? Her only response was, I'm a coward. According to this gutless parasite, up until our marriage, she's never been in a relationship where she wasn't treated like sexy. She was willing to drag it out and lead me on until she was finally ready to money branch into her next relationship. Naturally you might wonder why I didn't suspect anything for years. She was love bombing me. Every day she'd kiss me and tell me how much she loves me. How much she appreciates everything I do for our family, we had two cats, no kids. In my birthday card prior to D-Day she wrote, I'm looking forward to us growing old together. Just a ton of smoke and mirrors to distract me. D-Day was December 12, 2021. She slipped up and gave me a reason to become suspicious. She was an alcoholic, she'd binge when I left for work at night, but sober for 1.5 years at this point. She said that she wants to fly to Chicago for an Alcoholics Anonymous conference. Sure, no problem. She bought a gift for her AA sponsor who she claimed was one of the most important people in her life but she left it at home. I thought that was very odd but not enough for me to snoop. Later that weekend she texted me, I'm so fucked up and going through the steps again. She never talked like that. I interpreted it as her getting drunk which made no sense. You're around your sponsor and other AA members and you got drunk? I googled to check if there was an AA conference in Chicago that weekend. There wasn't. For the first time in our marriage I went through her iPad. I found photos of her having sex with another guy and screenshots of explicit messages he was sending to her. I'll post the full story in the future. My first and last journal entry. I will say that I made every mistake imaginable. I shed more tears than her. I considered reconciliation. I did the pick me dance. I took her out on dates. I had sex with her, but the attraction faded very fast as I learned about her ugly personality. Soon I couldn't look at her hideous face any longer and ended all physical contact. But for the sake of not dragging this out for too long, I filed for divorce and it was finalized less than two months after D-Day. She refused to tell people the real reason why we were getting divorced. She wanted to sweep the cheating under the rug. Eventually she relented and said that she'd tell her parents. On February 1, 2022 as she was moving out the last of her belongings, I asked if I can say goodbye to her mom who was waiting outside. Her parents treated me like a son as did the rest of the extended family. I told her mom, 
sorry that it didn't work out between your daughter and I to which her mom responded, that's okay. You were both equally responsible for this. Equally responsible? This pathological liar, I have screenshots of her lying about her identity online, must have lied to her parents and smeared my name to her parents. Hearing her mom say that set me off. At that moment I decided to wait until all legal documents were signed to expose her. The parasite ended up paying through her teeth financially. She wanted an uncontested divorce in our no-fault state. I guess she didn't want to stand in front of the judge and talk about her cheating. I kept the fully furnished house and 70% equity. I kept the newer paid-off car. I kept the money I was putting away every paycheck toward my parents' retirement, with her approval. The moment she complained about the house equity split, I told her that I won't negotiate. Hire a lawyer, we are going to court to contest this. She didn't. I refinanced the house at a 2.75% fixed rate. What a steal. She went back to renting and signed a one-year contract. The following month the Fed began hiking interest rates to combat inflation. The mortgage rates have at least doubled since then. Because of that she will end up paying tens of thousands of dollars more for waiting an extra year to buy a house. On March 7, 2022 I sent a nine-page email describing her cheating in explicit details to her entire immediate and extended family. 14 people in total, I spared the sweet little grandma from reading that smut who are all devout Christians whose lives revolve around the church. I then contacted her manager at work it out at her cheating. I contacted the CEO of her company and did the same. Five days later, there was a knock on my door. When I opened it, there was a sheriff standing with papers in his hands. I was served with a restraining order for harassment and stalking. To make her case stronger, she lied and wrote that I also abused her. She asked the judge to order me to enroll into a domestic abuse program. Mind you, I've never raised my voice or my hand at this woman even after what she did to me. This is someone who makes impulsive decisions without considering long-term consequences. She lied and wrote that I never let her leave the house alone, I made her work from home so I can control her, I controlled what kind of makeup and hairstyle she could wear, I abused our cats, I made posts on this subreddit saying that women in other countries get jailed or killed. I made a post on this subreddit saying cheaters, not women, are punished for infidelity by fine and even jail in other countries. She replaced cheaters with women and fine with killed to make me appear violent. You should have seen the dumb look on her face when I brought that piece of evidence to the courtroom and my lawyer made her read it out loud. In the end, she still ended up standing in front of a judge in a packed courtroom and being exposed as a cheater, something which she desperately tried to avoid earlier. After multiple delays, I finally had the restraining order hearing six months later. She looked like absolute sexy when she walked it. Those six months have not been kind to her. It looked like she has gained more weight, she was already fat before. Her stomach fat still visible even though she tried her best to hide it. She tried to cover her acne scars with makeup, but it looked so bad. Like a kabuki mask. Apparently my email caused a lot of problems within the family. Of course she never took any accountability and blamed me in the courtroom for sending it. The entire hearing lasted less than 10 minutes. She presented zero evidence. I had extensive evidence to disprove every single one of her claims but only needed to present one. Months and months of credit card statements showing that she was going to stores, restaurants, cafes, etc. while I was at work. Photos of us out together and her wearing different hairstyles and makeup. At one point, the judge turned to her and asked, do you have any evidence to prove what you are claiming? Any witnesses who can corroborate what you are saying? She replied, no. Her case was thrown out due to lack of evidence. The only reason why I haven't pressed charges against her for false allegations of abuse is because I don't want to be stuck in another six-month-long legal battle with this parasite. In the courtroom she tried to portray as if I was obsessed with her. I've moved on with my life a long time ago and I'm exponentially happier than I've ever been while with her. I realize now that I was never happy with her. I was only content. Ironically, cancer brought us together and I didn't find happiness until I excised the cancer out of my life. If she ever tries to contact me in the future, I'm going straight to police and pressing charges for false allegations of abuse. On the one-year anniversary of D-Day, or Liberation Day as my friend calls it, I went out to celebrate. I celebrated because I averted a catastrophe by 11 days. A couple of weeks prior to D-Day, she and I were driving in the car. She turned to me and said, I feel like you use me for sex, cooking, and laundry. Words cannot describe how horrible I felt as a husband. I felt like the worst husband in the world. I couldn't believe I made her feel that way. I pulled my mask up and tears started pouring down my cheeks. This is the first time I've ever cried in front of her. When we got home, she clarified that she feels like that because we don't share deep conversations. We talk about our daily life, but we don't have deep conversation. In retrospect, this parasite was projecting. In reality she was using me the entire time. We had marriage therapy scheduled for December 23rd. 11 days prior, I discovered her cheating. I must have had a guardian angel watching over me. Otherwise, I'd be in therapy now working on ways to make her happy while she is sneaking behind my back and cheating on me. Update, this is an alternate account for privacy and anonymity. My primary account was cited in the courtroom. 
One year ago I discovered that the woman with whom I've been with for close to a decade was cheating on me. I posted on this subreddit two days after D-Day looking for support because my support system was 1,000 miles away. I was so afraid to tell my parents. A year earlier, on Thanksgiving, my dad wrote that he is most thankful for one of his sons being settled in life, having a good career and a family of his own. And once my brother has a family of his own, my mom and dad would succeed as parents. I honestly thought that my news would devastate them so much that they both end up in the hospital. Like many others, in my original post I blamed myself for her cheating. Why wasn't I a better husband so she wouldn't feel the need to seek attention elsewhere? Thankfully, this group stepped in and collectively advised me to file for divorce. I follow this subreddit closely. To reciprocate for helping me through tough times, I will offer an update on my story. This one has a happy ending. Perhaps it will motivate you to go on your own journey of self-improvement. Or provide the impetus to leave your cheating partner. Or at the very least it will put a smile on your face reading about a cheater being exposed. Here is the summary of the past decade with her. After discovering her cheating, I was crushed. Self-esteem was gone. Self-worth? Non-existent. I decided to go on a journey of self-improvement to find my self-esteem and self-worth again. What helped me to regain my self-esteem was setting goals, then going out and achieving those goals. My weight loss journey started a couple of weeks prior to D-Day. Her cheating kicked it into another gear. I joined a gym a couple of days after D-Day. Over the next 11 months I lost close to 60 pounds here is one of the photos. A little over a month after D-Day, I signed up on a whim to run a marathon. I was still overweight at the time and hadn't ran a mile since playing high school soccer. But I had 87 days to prepare and I was determined to finish the marathon at any cost. I finished the marathon in a little over 5 hours. You can read more about my couch to marathon story here. After finishing the race, my self-esteem shot up. If I can do this, I can do anything I set my mind to. I'm currently looking for an endurance coach to train for a triathlon. A couple of months after the marathon, a friend challenged me to do a bodybuilding. It was so outside of my comfort zone, to stand half naked in front of a large crowd, next to competitors who have much more experience than me, and to be judged, but I accepted the challenge. With only 16 weeks to prepare, I needed professional help. I hired a personal trainer. Here is a collage of my physical transformation since D-Day culminating in getting on a bodybuilding stage and winning a medal. At this point I'm looking good and feeling good, self-esteem is through the roof and I'm oozing confidence. I'm currently training for one more show in June and one in October 2023. I made a wager that I will take home the first place in my class in October. This year I've been purposefully putting myself outside of my comfort zone. After 10 years as a registered nurse working with adults, an opportunity came up to work with children. This is way outside of my comfort zone. Health problems, common medications, and communication in general is completely different between adults and children. But I jumped at the opportunity and have absolutely loved it. Today I work at a children's psychiatric hospital where we provide crisis intervention for homicidal, suicidal, and self-harming children ages 5 to 17. Since the divorce, I will double my income in the first fiscal year. The goal for 2023 is to bring in $200,000. I'm in the last semester for my master's degree. I should be finished in the next couple of months. I took a 7-day, 10-state, 5,000-mile road trip to Montana with my best friend. While married, I always wanted to visit Montana but never pulled the trigger. We had an absolute blast. The highlight was going on a fishing charter, each one of us catching a 29 plus inch lake trout, then cooking it at our lakeside cabin. The goal for 2023 is to cross off a bunch of other states on the visit every state in the US bucket list. I'll be hitting Alaska, PNW, and SE states. This year I've invested more time and money toward my health and well-being than I did for the past 10 years combined while married to her. I attended three individual therapy sessions. My fourth session lasted 15 minutes. I had nothing to discuss about the past and wanted to focus on the future instead. As Wayne Gretzky said, I stake where the puck is going to be, know where it has been. The therapist said that he didn't feel like I needed any more sessions because I was doing so well. It's been a complete recovery at that point. I have no triggers. I used to get a recurrent nightmare of the two of them laughing at me, the clueless husband. Those nightmares stopped once she lied in the restraining order about me abusing her. At that point I realized that this parasite doesn't have an ounce of care for me, so why should I for her? The weasel's birthday is 9 days before my own and I completely forgot about it this year. On D-Day, or as my friend calls it Liberation Day, I went out to celebrate. In regards of my romantic endeavors, I waited until the restraining order case against me was dismissed before pursuing women. I whiffed on my first try. I asked a coworker, 40 plus F, out on a date and was hit with a I'll think about it and I'll let you know reply. Ouch. In my mind, if it wasn't an enthusiastic yes then it's a no. A friend suggested the Hinge dating app. I had a bunch of success there. Lots of matches. Took one woman, 38 F, out on a date. I'll preface this by mentioning that the last time I courted a woman was a decade ago. We were sending each other love letters through snail mail. 
This woman and I clicked very well while messaging each other, and then, a couple of hours prior to the date, fireworks. I told her that I have the date covered and don't want her to reach in her purse to pay for anything. Also, that I will hold the door for her wherever we go. Well, she didn't appreciate that. You should have put that in your dating profile. This is 2022 and most women don't need a man to pay for them or hold their doors. Prior to this, I asked what her boundaries are regarding holding hands, hugging, and kissing on the first date. She said that she needs to feel comfortable just to hold hands on the first date. Fine. It will be an Amish date. It will be like taking my sister out on a date. Needless to say, it get tense a couple of hours prior to meeting up. I asked if she wants to cancel, no hard feelings if you do, to which she replied, no. I'm intrigued by you. I could have canceled, but honestly, I wanted to see how much of a disaster the date will turn out to be. I imagined dinner to be the dinner scene for Mr. and Mrs. Smith followed by the scene where they're trying to murder each other. We met up and actually had a great time. Had a drink, then took a private Latin dance class, and had dinner afterward. No tense moments or awkwardness. At dinner I told her that even though I had a great time and found her attractive, I don't see this going past the first date. Even though we meshed well that night, our we'd clash in the future because of our personalities. I walked her to her car. She was gushing over me the entire time. She gave me a long lingering hug and we parted ways. When I got home she texted me, it looked like you wanted to kiss me all night. I replied that I did but I respected your boundaries. She followed that with, maybe I should have kissed you then. I told her to come over the next night to cook dinner at my place. She obliged. 24 hours later we were fooling around in my bed. She said that she wants us to date casually. Perfect for me. That gives me time to focus on my other goals. I ended up ending it with her a couple of days later because she disrespected me. After the parasite I was married to was so disrespectful toward the end of our marriage, I vowed to never let another woman disrespect me ever again. Had I started dating immediately after the divorce, I'd have probably put up with a lot of bullshit because my self-esteem was gutted at the time. And then I met my current girlfriend. I matched with a gorgeous Latina, 33F, who was not only open to chivalry, but welcomed it. In our conversation she said things like it'd be an honor to go on a date with you. No woman has ever said that to me before. Since day one she has done nothing but build me up instead of criticizing the way that Parasite used to do. When we met up, she immediately went for a hug. She held my hand while we were still in the parking lot and waited for me to open her door throughout the night. At the bar she touched my arm and shoulder while laughing. We went dancing and while she was so much more experienced as a dancer compared to me, I have no dancing experience and have two left feet, it felt so natural and sexy to dance with her. I didn't feel like a robot on the dance floor the same way I felt on the first date with the other woman. Our hands were all over each other and she was kissing my neck as merengue all over the dance floor. At one point the dance instructor left the room to let us do our thing. Ha! Huh. After dinner I took her to my employee party because she loves to dance. I slipped the DJ a $20 and requested her song. We danced while everyone else watched us. She had a beaming smile from ear to ear and rubbing up against me all night like a female cat in heat. By the end of the night she broke her own rule of no French kissing on the first date. She came over to my house three days later and we've been seeing each other every day since then. We deleted our dating apps after the second date and have been in a committed monogamous relationship ever since. We were born half a world away from each other, yet our cultures are so similar. I didn't expect to find someone like her this soon. I thought that I'd date a bunch of women before settling down. I knew that she is the one I wanted to pursue when a very pretty redhead from Hinge finally matched with me and I had no desire to open her message to read it. What a year it has been. It started out in the worst possible way and it's ending on the highest note imaginable. And the most exciting thing is that I feel like I've only scratched the surface. To culminate the success, I commissioned an artist to do this painting titled Rebirth of a Man for Me. I told him in January 2022 about my situation, the beginning of my journey towards self-improvement, and where I see myself in the future. This was his interpretation. I had no expectations going in and he still managed to blow them away. He delivered the painting to me shortly after I competed at the bodybuilding show. How appropriate. I hope that my story helps a bunch of you. It's so scary to leave the cheating partner. I've been there myself. At one point I considered reconciliation before finally pulling the trigger on divorce. But know that there is an exciting world out there beyond the walls of your current relationship. You will meet someone who shows you what a healthy relationship looks like. It wasn't until I met my current girlfriend did I realize that I was never happy with the parasite I was married to. I was content while with her, but never happy.